What is up, everybody? We are back here at King Film Sports for the NFL Week 2 betting locks and game predictions after we had a fantastic slate of games in Week 1 here. I also posted my reaction to all the games and my power rankings yesterday. Um, a slight update to that video. I didn't have the Niners or Jets on there because they did not play. And it's obvious now that the Niners, definitely a top two team. I actually have them number one and my power ranking might be a little controversial right now, but we will get to both of those teams, uh, the Niners and the Jets, when we talk about their game. But let's start it out here without further ado with a great Thursday night game on Amazon Prime. We've got the Bills at the Dolphins here, rematch of that week 18 AFC East championship game last year that the Bills won. In this one, I'm going to take the Bills to win this game. Uh, Dolphins are favored here, and a lot of people probably taking Miami. It's not a good spot here for Buffalo, um, having to travel from Buffalo all the way to South Florida on a short week after it was a tough game against the Arizona Cardinals till the fourth quarter there. They were down 17-3 in the second quarter, battled all the way back, did give up a full kickoff return touchdown to DJ Dallas and the Cardinals, but did win 34-28. to Defense needs to work on some things. Josh Allen got to clean up some mistakes, but overall team's looking good. Dolphins in that game against the Jaguars, I mean, really lackluster in the first half, but got it going in the second half there and were able to win by three. Some curious coaching decisions by Doug Peterson really helped them out there. But ultimately, I just think that the Bills are the better team in this matchup. I think Josh Allen's better than Tua Tungavailoa. And I think that that Dolphins team lost a few key pieces on its defensive line. I know that the Bills... Uh, line of scrimmage play is a bit worse themselves, but we'll be taking the Bills to win this one. But my betting lock is on the under 50 and a half. Now this line has came screaming down. It started at 51 and now it's down to 49, maybe lower in some spots. So take it right away. The justification behind this play is not only short week here. So I think that the offenses and everyone will be more tired, less plays and less preparation for the game. But in South Beach here, I think it is going to be very warm and humid. 8 o'clock start time still going to be over 80 degrees there. And it's supposed to be raining a little bit. It's on grass, so potentially some sloppy field conditions could lead to an under there. We've already got a little bit of line movement, but I expect this line to close around 46 or 47 points. It really depends on what the rain situation is looking like, which we won't really know until game time. Next, we get to the Ravens and the Raiders. Two 0-1 teams needing a win in this one. Baltimore favored by about 9.5. Give me the Ravens to win this one pretty easily here. Raiders really disappointing on offense last week with Gardner Minshew. They've got to perform better. And their defense really got gashed on the ground. So I don't know how they're going to stop this Baltimore Ravens squad. Um, the Ravens team on some extra rest here playing at home. I think that they get back in the win column here and blow out this Raiders team there. Next, we get to the Chargers at the Panthers, and I know a lot of people are going to be surprised with this pick. I'm taking the Panthers plus the seven points. Now, the line hasn't quite gotten there yet. Remember that it started out around three and a half or four, got up to five, and now it's six and a half. So I'm expecting this line to get to seven, but I'll take uh, whatever the highest number it gets at um, and nab it at that. But I just do think that people are selling their Panthers stock way too much. A lot of the professional betters were on the Panthers last week, plus four, plus three and a half against the Saints. I didn't buy in um, because I am higher on that Saints team than most, but I do think that this Panthers team, I mean, really bad yesterday, but it's all factored into the power rating. And now I think this is an overreaction. This is a home game for them, season home opener, and I do not think they can play any worse than last week. They're going to be getting chewed out by the coaching staff all week, whereas this Chargers team in Harbaugh's debut they win. Now they got to go cross country in week two. I mean, this is spelling a disaster for the Chargers. I think they're going to be a dogfight with this Panthers team. I think Panthers could potentially win outright here. If you believe something about this Panthers team before the season that they were going to be better than expectation, don't give it all up after one bad week there, however bad it was. So give me the Panthers plus seven there. Next, we get to the Saints and the Cowboys, two very impressive teams from week one. Give me the Cowboys to win this one. They always play great at home here. And I really do like this, what the Saints team did against that Panthers team. So I do think that this one could potentially be a shootout. And I do think that the Saints defense has improved. So we'll see if Dak can put up similar numbers in this one. But ultimately, I do think that Dallas is the better team. So give me them to win there. But if this spread keeps climbing, if it gets past seven, then we could be looking at a Saints spot. Uh, for a betting lock in that one. Similar number here in this Bucks lions game. Give me Detroit to win outright. This is a rematch of the divisional round game in Detroit last year. And really, 
in week one, we saw that these two teams are look really similar to how they looked last year. Lions played a better team than the Rams, almost choked away the lead, but got back to their fundamentals in overtime and ended up winning that game. So I do think that the Lions are better, have more talent here. I think you're going to see a shootout type of game. Baker and those wide receivers looked really good last week, and I think that they chew up this Detroit secondary. So if this line keeps steaming up potentially seven and a half or eight, I think you could be looking at a Bucks spot in terms of value, but outright, you've got to take the Lions in this one. Next, we get to a slew of betting locks here in the uh, morning slate. Colts at Packers here. Very critical that you get this one at the minus three. Um, taking the Colts minus three here against the Packers. Packers are coming off extra rest, but they're coming back from Brazil. So I think that's going to be a net negative for them, actually, in this one. And obviously, losing Jordan Love for at least a month here is going to be brutal. And Malik Willis just doesn't have much starting experience in the league, doesn't have much playing experience overall. Um, so I think this one is going to get ugly. Not that I think that this Colts defense is good, which is why I think you need the minus three and Richardson. Although he's going against this Packers defense, which is very bad. I think that he could make some big mistakes here. So you're going to want all the wiggle room that you could get. I think if this line steams up to four or four and a half, it might be worth a playback on the Packers, but definitely don't take the Colts uh, further than minus three in this one. But I do think that they're the better team. I do think that Willis will struggle in this one for the Packers, although they'll probably just try to pound the rock against this Colts defense, which may work in that one at home, but still Colts are the better team there. So give me the minus three. Next one, I'm taking the Browns plus the four against the Jaguars. Anything over three here, I think, is a good number. Going into the season, I think a lot of people thought uh, these two teams are about equivalent. Maybe the Browns uh, hair better. Um, but after week one, the Jags really, I mean, they weren't very inspiring. Trevor Lawrence had a couple throws. That ETN fumble in the end zone was massive um, and really bad for them. Uh, but I think a lot of people were kind of impressed by the Jags, uh, depending on what you thought about the Dolphins. But everyone was completely disappointed in this Browns team. And it's a perfect buy low spot for them, even on the road here. Uh, I hope that it's not too hot in Jacksonville for this game here. Um, I hope that they are able to keep their legs here, but I just think that they're going to be chewed out by the coaching staff all week and come out ready to play. Deshaun Watson has some new allegations, so chance for him to perform this week, uh, to say the least, because he had an atrocious performance this last Sunday against the Cowboys. So really anything better will do. I think they'll just get back to the ground game here against this Jags team, even though the Jags front seven is pretty good. So I'm just Honestly, just expecting a Deshaun Watson bounce back game because he and the Browns are going to need it. But ultimately, when I see this spread, I do think that these two teams are about equivalent here. And you're giving me four points of value. So give me the Browns to cover. And that one potentially went out right as well. Next game, we got the Niners at the Vikings. This one also big on the number. Niners at the Vikings. It was about five, five and a half before the Monday night game because obviously the Vikings did impress in New York against that bad Giants team. Um, but then steamed up to six. Take the Niners at the six. Nothing over that. Six and a half maybe, but definitely not at seven. I think you're looking at a playback spot potentially if the Vikings get up to seven and a half or eight in this game just because of the situation. Niners, big win. Coming off a short week, got to go to Minnesota. Minnesota, very tough place to play. Remember, these two teams played on Monday night last year, and the Niners were riding hot into that game and lost outright to Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Do think that the Vikings are not as good as they showed last week, though. I mean, really, uh, Sam Darnold, I know he played really well, but it's the Giants defense. The Niners defense is completely different. The Niners secondary, as we saw, is much better. Uh, they gave a few zone looks on that early driver. The Jets scored the touchdown, but when uh, they were able to get pressure uh, with just four guys, their linebackers still really good and their secondary very much improved here. Um, they've got Lenore and Traverius Ward and a couple good safeties. So I think they'll be able to stifle Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson. And I think that they'll force Sam Darnold into a couple mistakes here. I think that they'll stop the Vikings ground game. And I think even without Christian McCaffrey, I think Jordan Mason will be good enough on the ground. I think Purdy will be good. Although I do respect Brian Flores and this Vikings defense and his scheme uh, on a short week here, I do think that the Niners are the superior team. And I think that they beat the Vikings there and cover the number. Next game, we get to the Seahawks and the Patriots, two teams that are 1-0. Seahawks flying across the country here into New England. Curious spot, McDonald, first-year head coach, but I do think that the Seahawks have the superior talent. Thought that the Patriots win was kind of lucky last week. No doubt they did earn it, but Bengals just did not look ready in that game at all, and the Patriots did just a little bit more, so they went into Cincinnati to get the dub, but I just do think that Seattle's the better team here. I think Geno Smith and that offense will put up enough points, and I do not know about Jacoby Brissett against this McDonald defense, so give me Seattle to win there. Next, we get to the Jets at the Titans. Tough spot here for the Jets after they got blown up on Monday night. Short week, and now you're flying cross-country back to Tennessee here. 
um, against the Titans team, though, that, I mean, that was just an abysmal choke job against the Bears. They've got to play better. Uh, Bears didn't even score an offensive touchdown there, and the Titans lost. Only gave up 90 yards to Caleb Williams. Now, that is pretty concerning here because that Jets offense, especially through the air, did not look good except for a few throws by Aaron Rodgers, and the run game really didn't work out either. So expect a dogfight, low-scoring game, but hopefully the Jets' defense can improve. I'm taking the Jets to win out right here. Next game, we get to a divisional battle here. Two very disappointing teams week one. Give me the Giants to win here. I know that it's a slight upset, but I do think that Jaden Daniels a bit overrated. Some people are saying that he played well in Tampa Bay just for a few uh, runs that he had. I really did not think that he looked good, and I don't think that Bucks defense is any good either. Don't get me wrong. The Giants are a horrible team, and they played really bad, but I think that the market is a little lower on them, and I think that if this number steams up to Giants plus 3.5, we could be looking at a betting lock here. I do think that they get the win outright. Uh, Jaden Daniels, it's still going to be a second start here, and I think that this Giants defense will play a lot better. Not sure about Daniel Jones, but this Washington defense is really bad in their own right, so I just think that in a matchup of two bad teams, give me the Giants here on the road. Next game, we're taking the Rams to beat the Cardinals here. Two really frisky teams here, and the spread is about a pick em here as the market is realizing how good uh, Kyler Murray and this Cardinals offense can be. Even though Marvin Harrison Jr., their first-round pick, uh, was very pedestrian. I don't think he topped 30 yards in that game against the Bills. Um, but I will take the Rams here. Tough loss against Detroit and another road game, but they do always play the Cardinals really well here, even on the road. So I do think that it's Stafford in that offense and that improving young defense will be good enough to get this one done there in Arizona. Next game, we get to the Steelers at the Broncos here. This one is very contingent on the number, so you need to get the Steelers at minus two and a half here. Um, but I'm taking them at that number. Uh, if it gets a three, I'm not really sure. Three and a half or four, definitely a Broncos spot in the mile high because Steelers start the season off on the road. Now they're going to a very tough venue to play. Uh, Broncos home opener here, but I do think that the Steelers are the better team. And it really comes down to the Steelers defense versus Bo Nix. I mean, it is going to be very ugly there. Um, the Broncos were basically spoon fed everything in the first half because of the two safeties and great field position. And then the Seahawks just went on a tear there scoring, I think three straight touchdowns. Bo Nix though, did lead a drive late, which was pretty inspiring there uh, to cut it to six. Uh, but other than that, was not good. And this Steelers defense is a lot better than the Seahawks, as we saw last week against Kirk Cousins in the Atlanta Falcons. As for Justin Fields against this Broncos defense, I'm not sure, which is why I'm very hesitant at a number above two and a half, especially given this environment there. So take the Steelers minus the two and a half. Could be looking at a playback spot on the Broncos plus three and a half or four. Next game, we get to the Bengals at the Chiefs here. This line widely available. Take the Bengals plus the six points here against the Chiefs. This is the bounce back uh, of the century here. The Chiefs look really good, and yes, they are on extra rest, but the Bengals gonna be chewed out by everyone. They always come out of the gate slow. Sometimes that does persist into week two here, which is a little scary. Will they figure everything out? I'm not sure, but I just know that this line is inflated here. Chiefs, as they are respected as one of the best teams in the NFL, but the Bengals, everyone's selling their stock here. I think this is the perfect time to buy in on this team. They were dealing with a lot of drama over the offseason with T. Higgins, and Jamar Chase. I think that they'll get that offense dialed, and I think that the defense, especially against the run game, will play a lot better here. Inspired performance against the Chiefs. I'm not sure if they win outright, although I think it is worth it to have a little money line ticket on the Bengals as well there. Potentially see if they can get a big upset in Kansas City there. Hey, Burrow has done it before, so you never know. Next, Sunday Night Football, Bears at Texans, two young Potentially great quarterbacks in C.J. Stroud and Caleb Williams. Did not see that from Caleb Williams last week. But this Texans defense, in my opinion, very overrated. So I do think that he could do a few things. But ultimately, I just think that this is a great matchup for the Texans here. Stroud, uh, just a better quarterback at this point. Although the Bears defense was very stingy last week. So we'll see what Stroud and this offense for the Texans can get. Maybe a sneaky lower scoring game on Sunday night there than you expect. But give me the Texans to win out right there. And then we get to the Monday night game. We get the Eagles coming off that Brazil trip. Uh, at home here against a very bad Falcons team from what they showed against the Steelers. But still, give me the Falcons plus the seven. I'm waiting on this line. Hopefully we can get a seven or maybe more points there uh, for this Falcons team. I know Kirk on prime time. That's always a sweat here there. Um, sometimes he disappoints. But I do think that this Falcons team will play a lot better because the difference between the Steelers defense and the Eagles defense is massive here. Eagles very soft on defense, as we saw in Brazil last week. So I do think that Kirk Cousins will have a bounce back game. It was also his first game off the torn Achilles. Same could be said for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, don't really know um, how it's going to hold up. Just need some game reps there to get it back. 
I think that the Falcons offense will play a lot better. And then the Falcons defense, I don't know how you can really judge it against the Steelers and Justin Fields on late notice. They played fine. I mean, the Steelers didn't even score a touchdown there. And I don't even think they made it to the red zone very often. A lot of those were long field goal bombs there from Boswell. So I do think that the Falcons uh, defense will do enough to stop Jalen Hurts in this offense. Do think that it's going to be very close here. Potentially Falcons win outright as well. So definitely take them plus the points on Monday night. So with all that being said, let me know what you guys think of my predictions and betting locks in the comments down below. Be sure to join the betting picks discord uh, link in description there. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.